Full text of the developer interview conducted by the Korean community. Yeah, yeah. So this is the whole manuscript right here, chat. We're obviously going to try to skim through this as fast as possible. Um, reporter Ellie is on the scene. The devs have um, a little some juice, some questions that were answered by the community. So let's go through some of them, okay? Let's talk about the, la the latest one first. The update scheduled was initially announced in three divisions, but changed to two. And the scheduled has been moved up considerably. It wouldn't have been easy considering the development schedule is, is it okay? The answer is, there was a lot of feedback that the third update was too far away. So we had to respond somehow. The problem is that there are quite a few red days in early October and some sort of com of the company's um, foundation day overlap. So I wasn't sure if I was, if I could meet the schedule, but I just asked everyone to come to work. No employees disagree yet, LOL. I think they um, habitually click like but I don't know if it's really good. Considering that, the current plan is to set the earliest schedule while assuring minimum survival for employees. <laughs> Chad, I know this is gonna sound really, really tough, but that's crazy. Can you believe that? That's crazy. They are working overtime to put stuff out. Hopefully there aren't a lot of bugs and a lot of these guys that are working on this game do get their um, much needed rest because they have been going full speed since the release of the game, dude. They have been working so hard. So hopefully they get a little bit of break. Everybody deserves a little bit of break, except me. I stream every single day, Monday through Friday. Monday through Sunday. Um, if you guys are checking this out on YouTube, make sure you check out my stream. You know, maybe hit a little follow. I'm trying to get to 100,000 followers on Twitch. I'm almost there. And I don't know, maybe if you're bored and you want to hang out, hear me live, um, read your little comments live, you can stop by. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see, chat. It's been about two months since we started the live service in early July. I think there must have been a lot of changes inside during the pre-season. But have there been any changes in development direction, operation policy, for example, how to deal with the character's OP, content structure design? To talk about OP first, the strength of the OP build uh, that players are currently cutting in with uh, within our expectations. However, the speed is much faster than we expected. Uh, so they thought that we wouldn't be finding out. Uh, are they talking about OP as in like overpowered? Or is he like saying that he didn't think we will run into some of the more op overpowered stuff so fast? I, I don't understand what OP means for them. Before the service, I thought I would only care about how the content would be received, uh, how the content would receive the power of these OP builds in season one. But I had to think about it from the uh, preseason. I had no choice but to keep thinking about what content I would get from season one. Also, the direction of the build was somewhat different from what we expected. We expected more diverse builds to be utilized. LOL, you know nothing about games. There's never the more diverse builds. It's always two or three meta builds, and that is it. Nobody cares about anything else in any video game ever. It's usually the two, three, two or three meta builds, and that's it. But let's continue reading. Builds is from what overwhelming increase in uh, deal volume, skipping patterns, and reducing time became the trend. It can be said that average user's uh, specification has soared towards attack rather than defense or um, oh, uh, utility. Well, yeah, the best offense is a great, um, the, greatest, the greatest defense is a great offense. It was unexpected, but when you took, uh, when you look at the situation, it was unavoidable. Users always seek the most efficient means, so I think that's the fastest and most repetitive attempts come closer to efficiently. Uh, and the result has led to an extreme deal increase build. As a result, rather than having a variety of gimmicks and colors, our direction also shifted uh, to pursuing faster battles, more monsters, and more loot. Let's go. More, more, more. Overall, the gimmicks that are forced to use uh, time are eliminated. 
For example, the gimmicks that had to be escorted while consuming the shield were completely removed from the upper penetration operation. No slowing down. We gotta go faster. I like that. That's very good. And all the occupation sections that had to spin on were also changed to annihilation. In fact, the opinion that there were only destructions in the early stages of development and that there were more gimmicks during internal tests was interesting. So I put in various forms, but it feels like I'm back for the first time. The direction of this change also applies to the invasion introduced in season one, which has less than three, less than three. Oh, I'm gonna thank everybody for you guys' support. Give me a second, okay? Which has um, a puzzle gimmick. But if gamers quickly grasp it, they can explode the overload and proceed without waiting. Isn't the time limit for each content or the uh, uncertainty in the supply and demand of carbon that has created the, the deal to maximization and meta? I don't think we're running out of time for the Boyd Boss match. In the growth stage, there are often times when it's not clear due to the lack of time, but now there are also two second and five second cut certificates. The time limit for void bosses is the le least spec cut. I don't know what that means. The supply and demand of coal is clearly a problem. Um, so the translations are a little bit weird with the whole void and coal. They're probably talking about different material here. Uh, are particularly a problem. Convergence of furnace are particularly a problem, problematic. And since there are many cases where ammunition has never been dropped around them, they die on purpose and fill up with bullets. In the case of coal supply, oh, they're talking about ammo here, I think. Data monitoring continues to control the supply and demand, preventing major problems. Mm, this is a, a better translation. The ammo supply, yeah, so this is the cold supply. The ammo supply, on the other hand, is definitely a problem. Fusion reactors are particularly troublesome because there are often no enemies around to drop ammo. So players frequently have to intentionally die and respawn to get ammo. We continuously adjust ammo supply through data monitoring to prevent major issues. One of the reasons we believe that damage maximization meta arose is due to the lack of system refinements in the preseason build. Initially, the gameplay concept for the first Ascendant was to switch between this, uh, different Descendants and builds based on the situation, which was the combat meta we envisioned. You can see traces of this in void interceptions. For example, the executioner boss gradually increases its armor over time, but this effect can be nullified by using SMO skills, unique weapons, and modules that nobody cares and nobody uses. This is something we were hoping for, because why would you use SMO? to make to nullify stuff and make unique weapons and modules when you have a lepic that is overpowered that is an issue that you guys created there's no need for any other class when you could just build a lepic why would you care about building an smo at that point this is something oracle this is something we're looking for uh or we were hoping for but players ended up uh, just overpowering it with raw damage. This likely happened because upgrading modules, weapons, or creating SMO just to counter the executioner seems too efficient. And even if they did, it wasn't easy to s switch builds. When Gluttony first appeared, players found it difficult because Gluttony was a boss that was hard to handle with a damage maximization build. Simply overpowering it with a damage wasn't feasible, and changing builds wasn't easy either. Spiral Tide was also designed to encourage the combat meta but since skipping patterns with raw damage became more mainstream than using the intended combat meta in it naturally felt more challenging the pre-adjustment frost walker might have felt similar we learned a lot from this we realized it's better to create multiple clear routes without forcing a specific meta we considered how to con construct content to diversify the meta once it had settled and how to allow for more flexible changes with a single descent within a single descendant build without having to switch descendants is the socket type change introduced in season one as a result that uh of that consideration 
Yes, as mentioned before, we wanted players to rotate and use various descendants, but in reality, there were more attempts to focus growth on a single all-purpose descendant. However, even after expanding sockets, the inab uh, inability to change types means it's difficult to change the build direction, even with a preset function. The current situation we have a uh, re-level after changing sock types with additional catalysts make it challenging to attempt a build change. Therefore, we made it possible to freely change socket types after applying a catalyst once and save these changes and presets to switch it to necessary build anytime. Isn't the fundamental reason that it takes too long to fully level up a descendant? Is it growth? of the descendant were faster wouldn't there be m enough utilization of various descendants as envisioned Ooh, that's a good question the community complains about re-leveling so let's see what they say we didn't hold any in-game events during the pre-season starting from season one we plan to promote external growth through in-game events and overall experience efficiency and scheduled is scheduled for an update growth speeds should pick up more momentum compared to preseason <laughs> there you go chat we're getting more exp during season one i want to ask about structural gaps i got a structural gap for you you felt during the preseason during preseason there was no way to consume parts of already completed descendants Will a solution be provided? Oh, Chad, I did speak about this. I made a, a whole YouTube video about this. We are working on a solution for the accumulation of parts and blueprints. Oh, no, no. This is a different thing that we talk about, talked about. Of accumulation of part blueprints. Although I can't specify the exact ratio, it might involve breaking down blueprints to convert them into other materials. I have another question. The motivation to play as a regular descendant was very weak compared to the ultimate descendant, which was a perfect upgrade. How do you plan to provide motivation to play as a regular descendant? This is a basic descendant versus an ultimate descendant. A lot of people are like expressing disgust, dislike over leveling up a descendant. Oh, and, and before we delve, uh, dig deeper into this conversation, I have a little response to do uh, to the people that keep bringing up Warframe during this equation. There's a lot of comments. Well, there's enough comments that I feel that this is warranted in my chat and on Twitch and on YouTube, where Warframe players decide to slide their fat, nasty, unneeded opinion about Warframe. No Nobody, and not everybody has played that shit fucking infested crusted nerdy ass game okay why do you warframe players assume that everybody knows what the fuck a warframe is it's like they they just think that the whole world revolves around warframe and everybody's supposed to know what a warframe is bro i've never seen i've never played a warframe so stop trying to envision and put your shit on me like i'm supposed to know what a warframe is a lot of the people that are playing the first descendant don't even know what the hell a warframe is bro the game looks like shit and we're looking and we're looking at a beautiful game and we like to play that game instead stop trying to push your stuff on us we don't know anything about your warframe Anyways, just thought I'd put that out there. If you have a problem with what I said, comment down below on the video because you're definitely helping me on my channel grow. <laughs> but yeah, like, who the fuck knows, man? These guys act like everybody's supposed to know what a Warframe is. Not everybody plays your damn game, man. Like this dumb freak in my chat right now just saying no reason to reinvent the wheel. Like, I don't know what a Warframe is, bro. Shut your ass up. Nobody knows. Go play your game over there. But anyways, chat, let's continue. I um, He says, we didn't hold, um, this is in, in terms of like the, the descendant of being basic versus ultimate chat. This is an important issue that needs an update. The intention was for players to experience and use regular descendants first, and then move to the ultimate ones. But since the, they pale in comparison to ultimate descendants, most players tend to wait for the ultimate versions. Although a concrete solution hasn't been decided yet, it might involve applying the growth of a regular descendant retroactively when upgrading to an ultimate descendant. There you go, chat. 
they're thinking of solutions. And we made a whole video about this on YouTube, and I'm glad they're actually doing something about it. Hey, this is a great developer, a great developer that listens. Take notes, developers, take notes. That was, uh, that's what you suggested. Yeah. Um, there must have been a lot of feedback regarding reactor management. Was it all so difficult to switch between descendants due to the challenge of a main managing reactors? Are they a planned, are they any planned improvements? There are no changes to reactors in this update, but the reactor system is a topic of deep discussion. I also feel like this is an issue when playing. Finding the reactors you use every time you switch descendant is a problem. Oh my God, thank you for acknowledging this. We might get some reactor changes, which will make me happy. We plan to enhance the system so you can categorize and design up to eight favorite items, making it easier to find the necessary reactors in the near future. In the future, we plan to allow expanding weapon categories through reactor enhancement. So there, there won't be the need to continuously farm reactors based on a weapon use just to match the conditions through enhancement if the sub options are correct we are aware that reactor farming is a very grueling process the repetitive content is one thing but perhaps the most tedious part is sorting through the options on the farmed reactors one by one therefore we plan to introduce an additional random option filter to junk filter if an item doesn't have the pre-designated options it automatically gets categorized as junk with the pressing of a button. Ooh! I want to ask about ultimate unique weapons, except for a few weapons. Their usability is quite low. Are there any plans to improve, aka buff, the existing low utility weapons in addition to adding new ones? Um, to be honest, I was about to show the results later rather than just talking about it because I thought you wouldn't believe it. But I'll tell you in advance, we're preparing a rework and re rebalance update for all of them. All weapons and descendants that are currently deemed useless will have their time to shine in season one. Uh, 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 wait, wait, wait. Their time to shine. Pa pause. In season one, major changes are planned for Ajax, Blair, and Jaber. Let's go! Oh my lord, Chad, this is nothing but a win. Nothing but W's. Buffs for every useless Luna out there. Oh my god, so good. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh -uh -um. Ajax isn't useless though. Ajax isn't useless. But when compared with the five meta classes on the top, it is clear that Ajax does need a little bit of tuning. And they did, and they're giving it. Besides, why would you complain? Take the fucking buff, man. Why are you complaining? Why are we bringing this up? Take the buff! If this was my class in question, I wouldn't question this shit. Give me my buffs. That's so nice, though. I'm so happy that they are acknowledging that every weapon and every useless, in quotations, descendant, needs a little change. We'll take it. Let's take it. Let's not complain, Chad. There are also many criticisms about the UX UI. The menu was divided into two. There were too many operational demands and the lack of ping system was an issue. And are these also planned to be changed? We have been steadily changing the UX UI issues through hot fixes. The reason the menu was split is that it was designed with controller operation in mind. Since more than half of the first descendant users are console, the interface was designed to be suitable for controllers, resulting in a high demand for operations when switching between full map and inventory. I don't know how that makes any sense, but maybe that's just me. Therefore, we are creating a function that allows you to switch directly from the inventory to map, and the ping and chat functions are also quite lacking due to the console-focused design. We are working to improve them to a level that does not cause inconvenience in various ways. We are preparing significant updates starting with the Party Finder interface. Oh! 
party finder. Here we go. Ooh, Jack. Party finder. Let's go. Gatekeeping. Let the gatekeeping begin. Sorry, I'm eating my little breakfast bar. I'll try not to chew in your ear. There were also criticisms about the low usability of shields and defensive factors. The current meta focuses on health and defense. And in extreme cases, players don't even bother with defense. Isn't shield important for descendants like Kyle? I don't think the current meta will change just by improving modding. Ultimately, what's important is content that guides the player's patterns. There needs to be content that requires shields for shield research to naturally happen and shield-based modding to be created. But since there hasn't been prepared yet, the health meta has become dominant. I think as content increases in the future, research, uh, research on shields will naturally take place. That's good. That's good. That's much better than, um, you know, m maybe later play it out until you add more content and that's when you start bringing in more utility, more stuff to come into play. I like this rather than than uh, the other stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what about the balance between gunplay and power fantasy? Although every descendant has a unique ability, the utilization varies widely. For some descendants, it's better to just rely on gunplay rather than abilities. What are your thoughts? I think it is also an issue that will be uh, alleviated as more content is added. For example, currently, Lepic and Bernie. Bernie? Who is Bernie? He means Bunny? Currently, Lepic and Bunny are the most prominent descendants. Lepic is strong in uh, con concentrated damage, and Bernie is good at handling wide areas. Meanwhile, it's true that in the current content structure, descendants like uh, Prana, Blair, and Eskimo don't have speci specialized uses. If content is created where their abilities shine, research will naturally progress and it will fulfill the power fantasy beyond just gunplay. The, co the composition of outposts was also problematic during the preseason. Uh, pre many, many situations force players to play Sharon. Is there a plan to improve outposts? There were specific blueprints that dropped at a high rate from certain uh, ir ir irregularities obtained in outposts, causing repeated outpost play. We also know the reduced waiting time from five minutes to one minute felt tedious. We consider a rework necessary for outposts and plan to change it so that the continuous combat is possible without idle time and loot will be earned proportionate to the combat time. Okay, chat. Reworking outposts. Reworking some outposts and how they work. Not bad. Um, but once they remove the ability to um, do this with Sharon, I definitely see less, a lot less people playing Sharon. I don't know. We'll see. But let's talk about season one content. Could you explain the reverse ar ar array system in detail? The reverse array system is a type of season limited buff system where you can earn specific experience points while playing the invasion dungeon, which levels up the reverse, reverse array, array enhancer and unlocks one by one. You can select up to eight buffs effects from the categorized ones. The reverse array system mainly consists of buffs that make it easier to break through the gimmicks of the invasion dungeon and won't take long to fully unlock. Even players with a limited daily playtime can easily unlock them and it is designed to integrate well with existing builds. You say it's season limited. Does that mean the enhanced effects will disappear after the season? No. When the next season comes, it will probably appear under a different name. The season limited buff system is designed to enhance the convenience of the content for the season. season since season one focuses on invasions, it was designed to match the invasion operation, but the next season will likely have a different form. 
How difficult is it to obtain the new descendant Haley? The way to obtain Haley is a bit different from before. We try to reduce randomness as much as possible. Upon clearing an invas invasion operation, trophies are awarded based on the result, clear time, and score. And you earn a set amount of blueprints, fragments cons corresponding to the trophy grade. For example, earning a gold trophy would give you three blueprint fragments, which are then collected to craft Haley. However, Invasion operations are limited to two times a day, which is so horrible. You, so you can also farm fragments from other infiltration operations. But unlike the guaranteed drop in, in invasion operations, this drop is pro probabilis probabilistic, allowing players who can't play much to still eventually craft Haley, while those who invest more time can craft it faster. That is a great solution, by the way. Great solution. AKRNG, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck as long as it's not fucking daily gated. This is great. If you are a person who bitches about, oh my God, oh my God, I've been grinding a dungeon for 200 times and I haven't got my piece. Well, guess what? You can get that shit guaranteed by doing your invasion. And for us players who don't have a soft exposed vagina, who don't really mind the drop rate chances, we can get our shit faster. This is a great solution. This is a great solution for that. I appreciate this. Two approaches. For the people who complain about the drop rates, you get to have it guaranteed. While the other people who don't really mind the drop rates can go grind their fingers all day till they bleed. I like this. Great. This is a great approach to the drop rate. Yeah, yeah. Let's continue reading, chat. Uh, this is really good, chat. I was a little bit worried that they were going to lock it behind two or four daily missions, and that is it. I am so glad they're going to do something for uh, our hemorrhoids. Yeah, we get to develop more hemorrhoids on more hemorrhoids. Um, Let's see. Speaking of Haley, the schedule for module update is delayed, which can uh, which has caused controversy. Why is that? To be clear, he says... It is not that we did it maliciously to annoy players, except for the pre-prepared descendants. We had planned for transcendent modules for Haley to be released after a bit of time. We wanted to show that the descendants are useful, if even without transcendent modules, and then introduce the modules later to allow for the for final build configurations. But in hindsight, this seems like a misjudgment. Since it has been so unpopular, we won't be doing that again in the future. Okay. Okay, they're listening. They're listening, chat. So they realize that this is not popular. First of all, I don't know why they would think that. Maybe it's the same people in, in charge of bringing out Luna the way she is. <laughs> are the same people that thought that this was a good idea. But I'm so glad that those people got fired and we're going to get some actual good decisions. Bringing out... I'm just kidding, Chad. Nobody got fired. But bringing out the descendants first without modules just seems like a weird thing to do. It, it, it's like you're giving us an empty descendant. You know what I mean? Like, it just doesn't seem like it would be a complete descendant, so that would be a little bit weird. Um, I'm so glad that they realized that this is unpopular and not a real cool thing, and they're adding it. You know, if they still wanted to stick to their guns about trying something new, how about you add modules later on? But the initial descendant should be released with their modules complete. And then if you want to operate in an experiment with different build ideas for a descendant you want to revisit, you can introduce modules later on. But their mo descendants should definitely be released with their modules because that is their uniqueness. That is their what makes them unique. And releasing them without it just seems really weird. But that's just my take. Tell us about the invasion operation. What is the dungeon structure like? You mentioned puzzle mechanics too. 
It utilizes existing 16 dungeons. Two dungeons will have invasion events daily, and players will pro progress through the uh, through them in reverse order or with altered configurations. The invasion dungeon is divided into three sections, with players repeating the process of performing gimmicks and all opening doors. As mentioned earlier, there are no sections where time is forcibly spent. Puzzles are also allow players to reduce time based on their discretion. The update of Ultimate Pr um, Freyna was quite unexpected. The ultimate Volby was relatively easy to create. How difficult is it to craft ultimate Freyna? It is somewhere between the first ultimate descendant and ultimate Volby in terms of difficulty. It's not extremely hard, but not as, as, as easy to obtain as Volby. Every time we design these, there are a lot of uh, deliberations if it's too easy content will update quickly uh will deplete quickly but if it's too hard it will become a barrier um so they decided to take a medium approach where it's not too easy like volby was ultimate volby i feel like if you were a player that put at least two hours into the game a day you were able to get volby in like one day or two ultimate volby was a, a breeze to get so i'm, I'm happy that which I didn't mind either, by the way, if they made it easier. Um, but if they if they want to take a medium approach, that's good too. I don't mind it. So they're going to take like a, a medium approach to Ultimate Freyna on how fast it's going to be to acquire her. To increase the Ultimate uh, utility of Freyna itself before Ultimate Freyna ch changes to the dot damage over time, dealing mechanic seem necessary. Currently, dot-based descendants aren't performing well right. Bro! It, it, the person asking these questions, did they did they read my notes or something? I feel like every question I've had here was in my notepad. The reason in that mobs die too quickly. Daunt-based descendants are designed to have a higher upper limit than other descendants, but the situation to show that potential doesn't arise. Increasing the health of enemies significantly to enhance dot dealing would cause a balance collapse on its own. Therefore, a complete rework of dot-based descendant is planned, and Freyna will be reworked soon. Blair can perform to some extent just by laying traps, but Freyna's structure requires mobs to be alive, making the conditions seem overly restrictive. Interestingly, Blair's utility is quite high in the invasion dungeon. You can earn a gold trophy with Blair even around four reincarnations. Chad, is it going to be a Blair meta? Am I bringing out my Blair? Yeah. Re-leveling was the real annoying part, not getting the ultis. Uh, which, by the way, if anybody is just tuning in right now and you guys missed the beginning of it, um, they are reworking the EXP for Season 1. They are introducing, well, reworking in quotations. They are introducing EXP events starting Season 1. So this will make leveling up faster. Yeah. Will there be additional new modules in Season 1? There are no new modules planned yet. Given that many builds that vary depending on how you mod, there are too much to consider when adding a new module. While there are no plans for new modules in Season 1, we are continually planning new ones. Continually planning new ones. Can you briefly tell us about the new interception boss, Death Stalker? I can't tell you all the patterns, but it's considered to be on par with difficulty of gluttony. Currently, the hardest boss is gluttony, and before that, Frostwalker was the most challenging. With gluttony's introduction, Frostwalker's difficulty was adjusted. What do I read? Frostwalker's difficulty was adjusted. And with Death Stalker's introduction, gluttony will be similarly adjusted. That's what I'm saying, Chad. That's what I'm saying. Every time you release new content that is hard, nerf the previous one. I believe in this, uh, this to be a really good thing for game growth and game health. If it's something that's been out for a while, 
just nerf it. And who cares if like little John across the street decided to play the game two months later and he's not getting the full rich experience. Who cares? There's new content for little John across the street to enjoy now anyways. He doesn't, he doesn't need to be challenged all the way through. I think this is great game design. It, it, it keeps it healthy. It keeps people... Content right here, this. It keeps people at the latest content rather than stuck at like three years ago content. You know? So this is good. This is very good for the game in general. Yeah, yeah. As the community moves past the content, make the older content easier to do for people coming up. Yes, it keeps people more closer to the latest content. Nobody wants to get stuck in some previous content and get gatekept, especially with Party Finder coming up. Nobody wants to be gatekept and left behind and can't even do the new dungeons and the new anything because you're stuck at gluttony. That's, that's, that's troublesome. I like that. I really, really like this approach. Um, and maybe... The, maybe they don't need to go too crazy because maybe with a new added gear and new added descendants, the previous content automatically gets nerfed on its own. So maybe you don't even need to go too heavy handed. With new mods, new components, new descendants, the previous content might just be nerfed naturally or made easier naturally. You must have had many thoughts since the service started now as season one approaches. Could you share your mindset uh, moving forward? Um, the director or the person in question here says, At first, I fell into con a contemplation when I saw the metrics, uh, Metacritic score. I didn't expect a, high, expect a high score, but I certainly didn't expect a 56 or even a 57. Well, the reason you got a 56 or a 57 is because of hating, jealousy, um warframe players or destiny players that do not want any new blood in the scene and because you're nexon nexon has rightfully earned their position in gaming culture as a scummy predatory company because they did scam m millions of players or thousands of players in maple story so you will always experience this as an Exxon. Unfortunately, that's just the way it works. If you make shitty deals, shitty practices, you kind of deserve this. Uh, unfortunately, I think that the team at, uh, uh, that are working on this game are really great and they have been listening to player complaints through and through, but, um, but you can't also be surprised that your company in the West is received this way. Yeah. Initially, I hope for better reviews, even if the indicators were a little lacking, but the result was the complete opposite. The, re the reviews were much lower than expected, while the indication uh, indicators were better than anticipated. This caused all our plans to go away, and we had no choice but to change our mindset. We abandoned our pride and tried to grasp the current, the current trends. The problem was that the players were moving much faster than we anticipated. Therefore, our focus is now on increasing basic stamina. Until now, we've been trying to pull future resources forward to fill in, but there's no time to build up our reserves. That's why I recently conveyed to the development team that the most important thing is to maintain an update speed that meets players' needs while building up basic stamina. Two years ago, at IGC, I listened to a lecture by Bungie. It turns out that they were facing the same concerns we have. I think they, the key is speed, rapid changes, responsive feedback, and quick decision-making are what we are currently focusing on from this perspective. I think there's a lot lacking. For me, everything happening after launch is a first. It's the first time a game I'm involved in has been so successful. The first time I've received so much feedback and the first time there are so many issues to ponder. Since everything is a first rather than drawing a big picture, I'm working with the mindset to tackle the immediate issues before me with all my might. Sometimes harsh feedback catches me off guard, but most of the time 
It's the same issues that both I and the development team also feel. We too are hardcore gamers of the first descendant, and sometimes we get feedback from our own staff that doesn't differ much in intensity from what we hear from gamers. I want to build a foundation for a game that can be enjoyed for a long time, and a game that will be serviced for an extended period. There is no abandonment. Let's go. Let's go. The shade at the, um, Destiny right here. There is a no abandonment. Come on, shade. Actually, this is a, a big good news for us, chat. This is huge. If you are a gamer and you chose to play this game and spend any amount of time and or money um, on this, I don't know, chat. I can't speak for everyone, but I am definitely more than happy with this response yeah it's pretty good hey hello hello we do have a little bit of something to react to i don't know what this is apparently this was released today so let's check it out chat what is this chat what is this the first descendant meet Haley. character gameplay Bro, she thick. Bro, that's that's a thickum. Holy moly, that's thick. Holy moly, chat. Oh my god, let me sit up at my desk. Oh my god. Oh my god, that she's thick, thick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here you go. Let's see. Let's see what else. Bro. That's a big gun. She's cute. Her face is really cute. Bam! Oh my god. Oh, that's not a good angle. <laughs> but let's take a look at this boss fight though. Oh, that's the new boss fight, chat. That's the new um, intercept battle. She does a little leg swoop. Swoop. Bam. Ass shots. Oh. Yeehaw. Season 1, August 29th, Invasion. Play for free. That looks so cool. It does.